Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Aceves, and I'm here with Neil Babbins, and this is MindFit Podcast. How are you doing, Neil? Doing very well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm very excited to start one more podcast episode. Uh, the response we've been having is amazing, so we thank everyone who's been listening to us. And today, we're going to talk about, you know, why are we tired? And what kind of tired are you? And we're basically going to be talking about this article that I read uh, on thecut.com, which is a really cool website, and it's called The Science of Us. And it talks about, you know, different things that could be making you tired in your life. So what is the first thing that we have in this article, Neil? Well, the first thing that she lists out of seven major topics is that we could be hormone tired what she calls hormone tired and we could have an imbalance of hormones going on inside uh, our body of course there's fluctuations of hormones going on um, you know throughout uh, a woman's cycle and, and men, but men have cycles too apparently is what she's saying um, I know that for example that she was mentioning that if estrogen is low or progesterone is low that you could wake up with night sweats and um, I can personally attest to that. I know what that means. Even when it's cold, sometimes I'll be sweating at night. And um, I think I'm too hot, so I'll take off a blanket or whatnot. But I think there could be something or possibly hormonal in that as well. So that could be a reason why we stay up at night. You know, things that wake me up. I mean, besides my cat, <laughs> uh, who meows constantly. Um, I think it could be that. Anything physically uncomfortable. That wakes me up, and it could be from that particular kind of... I don't know. I haven't checked it out, and I will. But it uh, could be from our hormone balance. So yeah. she talks about that. Hormone tired. Mm -hmm. And I also um, love how she talks about... Um, but by the way, her name is um, uh, Charlotte Coles. She's the one that wrote this article on uh, January 24th, so it was uh, this year. And uh, one of the things that she talks about horm hormones is that melatonin and cortisol could also have an in impact in our sleep and how, you know, sometimes when we're really stressed out, we produce more cortisol and that doesn't let us go to sleep. Or, you know, melatonin, if our body's not producing enough melatonin, then, you know, we need to take melatonin. Um, but also sometimes we take too much melatonin because, you know, we think that, oh, you know, if I take more then I should, you know, it should benefit me more and I'll be able to crash more easily. But she recommends that, you know, apparently there's some doctor that recommends three milligrams of melatonin. No more than that, because if you take too much melatonin, then that could also have an impact in your sleep. So... I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, she said that um, if you take too much melatonin, more than the body actually produces, it could actually send your body out of balance. And um, because there's now too much melatonin in the system, it actually keeps you up uh, or affects your circadian rhythms and your sleep rhythms over time. So if your body doesn't produce that much um, on its own, so you don't want to take that much because you don't want to take more than your body produces because it just becomes excess. And she said, ironically, or you know, that could actually make you sleep um, less well. So I know I have heard uh, from people, I'm not saying this is science or evidence based or medically based, but I have heard from a lot of people tell me that they take melatonin, it works for a while, then it stops working. And this could be one of the reasons why is that there's too much in your system. And um, cortisol. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you, if it's a stress producing hormone, so if you're stressed, she talks about staring at the ceiling. I mean, if your <laughs> mind is ruminating, that can be anxiety. Um, you know, can be certainly be a reason. Anxiety and or stress can be a reason why your 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 sleep rhythms are are messed up. So that's yeah. If there's cortisol um, in your system, that could be stress related as well. Yeah. Also, you know, I, I love melatonin, by the way, is one of my favorite hormones that I've studied in, in school. Uh, for those of you that don't know, melatonin is a hormone that our body produces naturally um, anywhere between 11 p.m. and 2 o'clock in the morning. It is said that there's some kind of connection between the moon and the, our bodies producing melatonin, which I find very interesting. Um, kind of like the, the tide in the ocean, you know. And I, I, the first time I heard about melatonin, which I found fascinating, was in Spain. Um, I was being driven by this taxi driver, and then he was telling me about, you know, how he had a bad knee, and the he have had, you know, bad knee for the past 10 years, and that it wasn't healing, and it wasn't healing, and he kept going to the hospitals, and they couldn't find out what it was. And one of the things that eventually they found after 10 years of him, you know, having this bad knee, is that because he worked at night, 
Um, he, his body was never able to sleep between the hours of 11 p.m. and 2 o'clock in the morning. So therefore, his body was not producing uh, melatonin. Uh, and, and because his body was not producing melatonin when he slept during the day, it wouldn't heal. And so melatonin is not just, you know, a hormone that helps us to sleep, but it also heals the, the you know, um, tissues in our body. Mm. So if you have anything that's wrong with you, usually around between 11 p.m. and 2 o'clock in the morning, your body heals that that part of your body. So it's it's a great way to, to you know, um, regenerate the tissues in your body now the problem nowadays with melatonin is that you know when we when we're on our phones at night before we go to sleep and we're looking at you know social media or checking our messages or even just watching a show or a video uh, on our phones the our the the our eyes have receptors in them and when they see that there's light and especially the ones produced by our phones or televisions or any of the electronics that we use nowadays our bodies go, oh, it's still daylight, the sun's still out, so therefore I'm not going to produce melatonin. And that's why a lot of times we have a hard time going to sleep at night. So it's really important to to not have your phone um, in, you know, next to your bed before you go to sleep or at least stop using any electronics for the you know at least an hour before going to bed. And I know that's, I've heard that a million times, but it's really hard for me to do. Like I still don't do it, <laughs> even though I know that it's affecting me. And I know uh, for Apple phones, for example, they, they came out with a new night mode that actually makes your, you know, screen dimmer and then it produces the same effect as as nighttime so it makes you not you know it allows your body to produce the melatonin in other words but still you know the idea is to to just be you know prepare yourself for sleep mm -hmm. do whatever it takes so you can sleep better you know at night so i don't know what you think about that i think it's a it's an incredible piece of information because melatonin is produced between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. um and it helps to repair and heal your body, that could really relate to a lot of reasons why people don't sleep very well. Because Not only because if you have physical injuries, they'll be more uncomfortable and uh, you know um, painful at night. Also the worry around the stress around not healing. You know, why is my knee not healing? Why mm -hmm. am I feeling this way? What is that ache and pain? And we talked about rumination, staring at the ceiling. It's just to increase that even more. So one thing uh, leads up to another, leads up to another, leads up, leads up to another, and then you stay up all night. You again miss your 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. cycle. Yet no more melatonin, yet more. If it's anything is going on inside your body, any kind of tissues that need to be replaced, if you're an athlete, if you work out a lot, if you uh, tore something and you didn't know it, if you have some sort of, you know, uh, illness or, or, or whatnot that, that has to be healed, that could all play into it. So it makes a lot of sense. It becomes like a perpetual cycle. Right. Yeah, it's it's really, really important to take care of yourself and your body and, and understand the, the how it works, you know. Uh, another thing that's important is the thyroid. I mean, there's so many people that have thyroid problems that mm -hmm. don't know that they have them. And they could feel really tired th throughout the day for no reason, you know. And so if you, there are certain things that can tell you that, like if you're gaining weight without any reason, you're, you're still not eating too much and you eat, you know, you, th you consider yourself eating normal or less than normal, but you're still gaining weight. Or if you have dry skin or you're constantly feeling like cold, even though it's not cold outside, that could be issues with your thyroid. And so all these things are important because your thyroid actually regulates the hormones and the metabolism in your body. So there are so many things that could go wrong just simply because of this tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just a simple test that you can take. And, and you know, if you ask your doctor to te test your thyroid, because normally they don't test for it, by the way, mm -hmm. you have to tell your doctor to do it, you know? Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I was actually a chubby kid. And my doctor said once um, that it could be possibly a thyroid. If the thyroid is slow, the metabolism could be naturally or genetically slow. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, I ate like a, like a, you know, I ate a lot when I was a kid. So <laughs> I was like, I don't know, doc, it could be, but you know, there are other factors involved. Uh, now as an adult, I'm, I've to totally turned vegan. I, I work out, I exercise and I've remained relatively thin, but I do notice that, and this could be my body's weight memory, that I often talk about in the project that I'm working on. It could be that fact that my body remembers myself that way, you know, cell in a cellular level. So it's harder for me sometimes to stay um, in the same place fit wise as it is uh, some other people sometimes. I have to work a little harder at restricting, uh, not restricting, I don't like that word, but, um, you know, careful about what I eat than other people. And that, again, that could be because I had spent so many years 
in uh, an overweight state, or it could also be because of, of thyroid, so, you know, or a combination of both. So it's important to check out with your doctor. If you're not sleeping well, one of the things I will always ask clients is, have you seen your doctor lately? Have you had a checkup lately? When's the last time you went for a checkup for lab work, for um, everything, you know, mm-hmm. and let your doctor know that you're not sleeping well, because we have to eliminate all possible other issues before we could, you know, isolate the, um, a psychological issue. Yeah. And I, you know, and sometimes this could happen to anybody. Like I can give you an example of my brother who loves running, right? He, um, he can run for, for days. And a few years ago, he, he decided he wanted to run more than one marathon per year. And I thought it was a really bad idea, but he's like, no, I can do this. And, you know, he's uh, fairly young. He's in his forties, early forties. And so he started running the OC marathon and then he started doing the LA marathon and then the Santa Barbara marathon and then this and that. And towards the end of the year, he was doing a marathon and he, you know, he started to get really tired and felt like he was going to die and his heart was pumping really hard and you know he didn't know what was wrong with him and then after that he was just really tired um running out of breath and he he just decided to go to the hospital and and get himself checked and it was the thyroid he actually um Mm -hmm. broke his thyroid from doing too much exercise so it's something that could happen to anybody i don't care you know how much you take care of yourself it could happen to you and so the rule number one rule that i tell everyone is you have to listen to your body you know and and i told my brother that but he didn't listen and obviously that he had to pay the consequences and it took him you know two or three years to get back to normal uh luckily he was able to get back to normal but some people you know they they can't and they have to live with um they have to take hormone pills uh for the rest of their lives Mm -hmm. and so it's important to check yourself to be like you said you know go to your doctor make sure that you're taking the right you know vitamins and things that your body needs and supplements because that's also important right yeah were there any warning signs that you know of um in terms of would is there any way that other than overworking himself that your brother would have known that his thyroid or anything was going wrong. I mean, sometimes people really do want to take, take things to the next level. So what is a good way to gauge, you know, uh, if something's going wrong, how do you listen to your body? Obviously, if there's an injury, you'll stop. But sometimes they say there's a good pain and a bad pain. And do people really know the difference between one or the other? You know, would you know if you're reaching? Because you're supposed to push yourself beyond the threshold. But What's the threshold? You know, how do you know? Are there warning signs when it's like, okay, this is serious. I got it. <laughs> or getting serious. Yeah, I think I think your weight is a very important, you know, uh, thing that can tell you a lot. Uh, for him, it was, you know, he started losing a lot of weight, even though he wasn't exercising as much after he finished the marathon. So the last marathon, right? And and at that point, you know, and he stopped running marathons, by the way, because of the last marathon, because he felt like he was going to die. He felt really, really tired. And, you know, he would you know, run a little bit and his heart would just go over 200 um, yeah. uh, beats per minute. And, you know, at some point it was like 250 or something like that. And so he's like, OK, I got to I got to slow it down. And he never got that high. So, you know, again, your thyroid, you know, regulates a lot of different things. And so it's important to to listen to what you know what's going on with your body and anything that looks abnormal that's not your norm um, has to be checked because mm-hmm. you know you really never know and more than anything also you know how tired are you because you can feel really tired all the time even though you slept the whole night you can feel you know a lot of energy um, even though you haven't slept and so there's got to be something wrong with that you know because that's there are two types of thyroid problems is with the hyper one the hypo Mm -hmm. the hyper is when you your your metabolism goes faster and so you start burning a lot of calories without doing anything and you start getting really really thin Mm -hmm. and the hypo is the the opposite where you you know you start you you know um your, your body doesn't burn any calories and or your metabolism slows down and you start gaining a lot of weight right. for no reason and you're not even eating or anything but um so there's there's multiple ways that that can go wrong but the idea is to to listen to your body to know what is going down that's not right and and get checked and ideally yeah. you want to get checked once a year right yeah and when something feels different than it felt before, that might be a good gauge. You know, something feels different than it did before. So if it took you, if you did run a marathon, it took you two days to recover. If it's now taking you four, 
You could say it's because I'm getting a little older, et cetera, et cetera, but just be aware of the differences in recovery periods and recovery times and how you typically feel if you got six hours of sleep as opposed to seven, how it typically feels. If there's a change, a drastic change, um, that could be, I think, a good gauge as right. well. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, um, are you getting the right nutrients? So sometimes you can be nutrient defici- deficient mm-hmm. and you might, you know, uh, need more vitamin D because a lot of times people don't go out nowadays. Yeah. Like if you work from home, maybe you don't see the Hello, sun throughout the day. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then vitamin D, uh, I mean, vitamin B and there's also, you know, minerals that you need, your body needs. Yeah. Uh, so, for, for example, one of my favorite ones that I take is called um, magnesium chloride. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people don't know about this, but... But, you know, unless you have kidney problems, by the way, you shouldn't be taking it. But if you don't have kidney problems, um, it's a very important mineral to take because um, back in the day, you know, when they used to plant um, corn or like any plant that goes grows in the soil, it would take longer. It would take like sometimes 10, 10 times as long to grow in, in the, the, the soil and it would absorb all the nutrients from the soil, you know, and, and, and so when you ate tomatoes or, you know, corn or anything like that, you'd be getting those minerals. Mm-hmm. But nowadays we have, you know, genetically modified um, vegetables and so they grow a lot faster within... 15 days or a month, you already have, you know, what used to take six months back in the day. And so this new vegetables that we have that we can buy at the grocery store don't have the same nutrients that we used to have back in the day. And so we have to take supplements. And mm. and, and magnesium chloride is one of those. It is one of the, the the most important ones for our bodies to regenerate cells in our body. So they, magnesium chloride goes directly to your mother cells, which are the cells that go to every part of your body that needs healing. So if you cut yourself or if you have some kind of um you know problem the cells can become any part of your body and and they're very um important and magnesium chloride goes directly to those cells and i you know highly recommend it i've been taking it for years and it really makes you feel better makes you have better um digestion it it just helps in in tremendous ways and and just like that magnesium chloride there's a lot of other things that we need that are important for our bodies and sometimes we're not getting them because of our diet yeah, absolutely. I mean, one thing I know that I could share for about myself is that um, I'm originally of um, a Greek origin, and I have something called thalassemia minor in my blood, hmm. and um, it's uh, just I'm a carrier of a of a blood disease. But before people get freaked out, it's just I'm just carry it in my blood. It's just uh, I don't actually have the actual full blown disease. Uh, it's a minor version of it. But how it shows up is through a I- slight iron deficiency or um, a slight anemia in my and in, in my blood so it makes me feel a little bit tired um very in a very mild sense and it's also um i i need a lot of extra vitamin b6 and b12 to, in order to feel normal in order to feel okay so i take a vitamin b supplement almost every day a complex supplement and it really helps me with energy helps me with uh, thought processes um, it helps with digestion and metabolism as well and it really keeps me um, it really keeps me going. So that's that's, that's one. Sometimes you have to ch- uh, check on your genetic um, predisposition because you know if I before I knew I had thalassemia minor, I was wondering what was going on because I was a little bit, you know, a little. I wouldn't say dizzy, but I mean a little bit, you know, um, under the weather. It felt like, and no matter how much I slept, it would always feel that there was a little bit. So, there was something missing. There was something wrong, and. Um, Yeah, so, but I was also told, for example, this is why it's important to see your doctor, not to take iron supplements just because it shows up as an iron deficiency. It really depends on what is going on with you. So uh, thalassemia minor, I had an iron deficiency. It showed up as an iron deficiency, but really is a slight anemia. So it was a different different idea. My doctor said, don't take iron supplements. You're just going to end up, you know, infusing yourself with iron which is could, could be dangerous if there's too much in your blood. So um, vitamin B was actually what I was lacking. And, um, you know, vitamin B6 and B12 in particular. <clears throat> and because I don't eat meat, you know, because I don't eat, I'm a vegan, that's also important. So, yeah, and, um, if very you're, important. Yeah, and if you're from, if you're from um, like a place that's more northern, like uh, where you don't get a lot of sun, you might want to look <laughs> into vitamin D. <laughs> vitamin D is, you know, comes from the sun. So, um, you know, um, yeah, that may be something to look into also. If you don't get a lot of sunlight or if you're in a place where there's a lot of cloud and gray, that'd be something else to consider also. Yeah. yeah. And the, the thing about these uh, nutrients is you can actually get tested for all of them. You know, you just ask your doctor to do 
you know, run blood tests and you'll know if you have any deficiencies mm. on any of them. Uh, also, you know, like if you're vegetarian, you're definitely going to have some deficiencies mm -hmm. on that, which is why it's also important to have supplements and to take them. And, um, and as far as iron goes, I was, I was going to tell you, I, you know, when I used to be vegetarian for 14 years, beans were my thing, you know, I would eat beans all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because when I, when I was, uh, when I went to, uh, when I would get tested, they would find a lot of iron in my body, in my blood. And one way to get it out of your system is to donate blood. I didn't know this until, you know, I, I, would, I went to donate blood at mm. the, the uh, Red Cross. And they told me that, you know, when, they, when you donate blood, they take out blood of your, out of your system and they're actually emptying your, you know, the iron in there, which is something that you cannot uh, get rid of naturally. So yeah. pass that on for whoever is interested. If you're vegetarian out there and you eat a lot of beans, you know what to do. <laughs> that's actually, it's funny because that's how they found out that I was thalassemia, had thalassemia minor is I went, I was the uh, head volunteer of a blood drive when I was a teenager and they took, uh, they do a little blood test before, you know, it'll they tap your finger with a, a needle and um, showed up as iron deficient. So they sort of stopped me in line and said, we can't take your blood. You're going to faint. I'm like, why, why would I faint? And they said, you have an iron deficiency and that could mean one of a few things. So go see your doctor. Ooh. So um, I went, yeah. And he took a blood sample and a few, couple weeks at that time, it took a couple weeks. Uh, later, he called me and said, you don't have an iron deficiency. You have something called thalassemia minor. And I said, oh boy, how long? You know, and he said, "No, you're fine. You just you have you're you're carrying something called thalassemia, and it's um, predominant amongst Mediterranean origins, and it just shows up that way." So, yeah, um, I I I'm not allowed to give blood. Actually, mm. I'm not allowed to give blood because, um, uh, yeah, because well, I, I could become very faint, and also um, it's got thalassemia minor in it, but I don't think that that's I don't think that that's just particularly an issue to have it in it but they told me i can't get blood so hmm. i don't okay yeah well another thing that i found interesting by the way in this article is uh it, it mentions that if you take um, magnesium powder every night before you go to sleep mm -hmm. um, it actually binds with the melatonin hormone in your body and it's it actually helps to uh create more melatonin yeah. and and you sleep better at night so sometimes, you know, taking supplements can help you sleep better and be more rested. And, and that goes um, with our next uh, uh, thing, which is number three, um, if you're stressed, tired. Hmm. So sometimes I think this is a lot of us, right? Yeah. This is where I get the most, uh, most you know, most people coming to me about um, being stressed, tired, you know, having a lot of rumination. Um, ha of course, having a lot of extra, you know, uh, hormones uh, swirling around in your body as well. But when you're stressed and um, you start to ruminate, you know, that, that, that doesn't allow you to relax. So it uh, keeps you awake. And um, I think that's probably usually sleep disturbances are, are amongst one of the biggest uh, symptoms we'll see when people are depressed or when people have, have anxiety. Um, so if we eliminate all these other uh, possible reasons, we have to look at, um, you know, what's keeping people awake at night, you know. Yeah, and stress can become chronic. By the way, if you str if you get stressed constantly about work, about this, and you start thinking and thinking, that definitely has an effect on your sleep. Um, it also has a an effect on your overproduction of cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. You know, it's the st the naturally our bodies produce uh, cortisol to keep us awake and aware. Uh, there's been a lot of studies and they found that, you know, usually around 10 to 10 30 in the morning, we have the highest level of cortisol in our system. And they connected that to our ancestors. You know, when they used to go out hunting, uh, in the mornings, they had to be alert. They had to be, you know, right on, on track. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, uh, you know, nowadays we, we have, we still have that production of, uh, cortisol. And, you know, that's usually 10, 10, 30 in the morning, and then it starts to go down naturally. But if we have stuff that stresses us from work, or we have stuff that is st stressing us in our relationships and our, our, you know, regular lives, or we're not, you know, exercising enough, and we start gaining weight, and that just gives us, gives us more stress, and we start getting, you know, more stress about the stress. And it's just, <laughs> you know, there's so many things that are wrong with stress, and, and sometimes we can't help it. Well, the thing to look at, I, I tell people, is what's underneath the stress or what's underneath the anxiety. So that, you know, back in the day, you know, when we had to go out and hunt, so to speak, and we needed cortisol, 
um, we they, they were they were more in, in tune with survival as opposed to feelings or as opposed to emotions. So oftentimes I'll tell people if you're up at night and you're ruminating, you're stressing about stress, about stress, about stress. If you stop for a moment and you check in, you take some do some deep breathing and check in. How am I feeling? What is the feeling here? Not what are the thoughts or the rumination, but what am I you know what I'm actually feeling? I call it reflecting as opposed to ruminating. They both start with R. So it's Mm -hmm. easy to remember. Don't don't ruminate, reflect. Reflect on how you're feeling. What's the emotion underneath the stress? Because the the core emotion underneath the stress, if you get in touch with it and you don't ruminate on it, it is only going to last for a few minutes. And if it only lasts for a few minutes, you can be with that and that actually can help you to relax because you could actually be with what's underneath the stress rather than trying to figure out the stress, trying to fix it by thinking about it, Mm -hmm. by worrying about it, which is as anyone knows, is not going to fix it, right? <laughs> so we just want to get in touch with what's underneath that stress, what's underneath that rumination, what feeling, what feeling is it? And then people will often say things, well, I'm pissed off, I'm irritated. No, go deeper. You know, irritated is more on the surface. You're irritated, you're frustrated, you're worried. What's underneath? You know, there's usually only a few core emotions, and they, amongst them, the biggest ones are fear and sadness. Fear is a biggie. You know, it's fear of something. Mm-hmm. So if you could just sit with the fear for a few minutes, you'll realize the fear is just something pure that will only sit with you for a few minutes. But if you stress and worry, you can make that last a long time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, also important to take breaks, to, you know, exercise, cultivate supportive relationships, and, you know, obviously meditate, like you're saying. Um, and one thing that I loved in this article as well that, um, uh, this woman talks about is that, you know, this doctor recommends to his patients, he says that, you know, taking 30 minutes to an hour to meditate a day is the luxury that most people cannot take because, you know, they have a firestorm of work. And so when, one of the things he recommends to his patients is to take mini meditations throughout the day. So in between patients, for example, he says that he, you know, sits down for a minute and just relaxes himself you know, find some peace and then, you know, move on to the next one. And so if you start to work on that, he says, you know, if you do mini meditations throughout the day and you do 15 to 20, at the end of the day, you will get your 20 minutes of meditation, which is what it's clinically proven to help you improve your life. And so he says, you don't have to do it, you know, all at the same time, which I, I totally agree. And I love that about this article. And so I recommend that to take some some time, even if it's just a minute, you know, throughout the day, multiple times a day to just, you know, relax, to calm down, to, you know, ground yourself and then go back to your work. And that will help you to to get better um, over time. And obviously, if you can sleep better and find ways to sleep, even if you have five hours of sleep, but if they're, you know, deep sleep hours, those are much better than nothing, you know? Absolutely. I like the idea of little mini breaks. And if you start to get in touch with a feeling, just remember, don't think about the feeling. Just have the feeling. You start thinking about the feeling. People say, well, if I do those mini breaks, I'll just end up stressing out, you know, um, or, or if I start thinking about the feelings in those little meditative states, I'll just start stressing out again. Don't think about the feelings. Don't try to fix them. Allow yourself to 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 be with them Uh, allow yourself to be with the unpleasant feelings just for a few minutes if that's if that's part of the the mini break sometimes we just have to sit there and be with just be with it you know yeah yeah the next thing that this article talks about is that you might be genetically tired Uh, apparently there's been some genes that are linked to fatigue and chronic fatigue uh, it's called the clock gene. So it's like your circadian rhythm and it could have an issue with, you know, how you feel. Uh, it could have an issue with your body temperature, your blood pressure, liver functions, among others. So it's important to, to get checked for that as well. Um, uh, I don't know how you do that. I think you can just ask your doctor or there are, you know, certain labs that you can do that uh, directly. But, you know, it doesn't hurt. And, and we know a lot more about gene, genes nowadays than we used to back in the day. So if you've already tried all the other things that we were talking about and nothing's working, then this could be another possibility. And I think it's important to, to check whatever you can to make sure that you find what the reason is. You know, and when you target the reason, then you can feel better. Absolutely. Absolutely. When people come, come to me and, and say they're having an issue, I always, you know, ask them to isolate what, it, what else it could be. You know, and uh, these are all lists of possible things. It could be from hormones to nutrient deficiency, 
Um, you know, it's just something genetically bound to to you. Stress, um, other other issues going on in your life. So it's, it's it's very part and parcel. You have to sort of pull it apart, dissect it, and um, definitely, definitely see your doctor first. Um, there, there are also there are sleep specialists as well who can get into more uh, detail about you know all these all these areas as well, which might be a good idea if sleep is really chronic <laughs> an issue for some people. Yeah, and when it comes to the gene, by the way, the gene disorders, uh, the, one of the things you can check as well is you know how well your body pr- uh, processes alcohol. Uh, I know a lot of Asian of Asian uh, descent people have a gene that doesn't allow them to process alcohol very well. Mm-hmm. So there's multiple things that could happen. So just observe your reactions to certain things, and then you know maybe even look at your family history. Is if anybody else had any issues in the past with your genes, and so that's another way to look at it. So, what's the next thing that we have? Uh, the next thing is you have had. Uh, what is it? Bad sleep hygiene. Bad sleep hygiene. <laughs> yeah. Bad sleep hygiene. <laughs> yeah. What time you go to bed? What time you wake up? Um, speaking of alcohol and sugar, caffeine, all those things mixed together. Your phone, your laptop. Um, your 75 inch screen, your neighbor's music, my cat, you know, um, yeah, all those things could be. What I've done recently, and this might sound very simplistic, is um, I've noticed that I spent a weekend up in the mountains a couple of weeks ago, and it was, as you could imagine, so incredibly peacefully quiet, uh, sometimes too quiet for some people. But when I came home and then I had to listen to traffic outside and a specific, I have uh, several animals, and one cat was particularly loud. I would just put them in the other room, and that sounds simplistic, and close my door so that it's time for them to spend, you know, um, time in the other room while I sleep, and trying to isolate the sounds, you know, in any way that I can. Some people wear headphones or have some white, um, some white noise going on. That really, um, really affected the quality of my sleep just to being able to not have those noises around me and i feel bad that kitty can't be in the same room but (laughs) he wasn't doing much except meowing so he's in the other room so um you know finding out what's keeping you up is it sugar is it caffeine before sleep alcohol tends to have uh, an impact where you sleep you fall into a deep sleep for a few hours and then you come out of the cycle it's hard for you to fall back to sleep if you've had typically so um too much sugar too much caffeine you know, all that combined. Exercise helps. It helps me. I know when I've worked out, I could, you know, I can crash a lot more smoothly than if I haven't. So <laughs> this one is actually uh, something you can do something about. You know, um, you can control a lot of the things that happen in your life and what time you go to sleep. You can control, you know, the animals in your life, your mm-hmm. pets. You can also control, you know, the electronics in your life. You can control what you do as far as exercise goes and your eating habits. And, you know, there's so many things that are now distracting us from being able to sleep, you know, a good night's sleep. So knowing this and knowing what works for you, I think it's best for you to come up with a plan and to figure out, you know, what things you can change and improve Mm -hmm. so you can sleep better. And sleeping is important because, like we said earlier, it actually helps to heal your body, you know, heal Mm -hmm. the tissues in your body. It helps with stress. It helps with so many different things. And in fact, a lot of people who have mental disorders, the very first thing that doctors try to do is put them to sleep, you know, so they can relax a little bit. And really, honestly, there's no reason to be stressed about anything. The the reason that we get stressed is because we think that we need to be stressed. And we have all these things that we're carrying in our minds, and it's causing us mental suffering. But in reality, if you really, really meditate on this, and you think about it, and you look at your life, there's really no reason to be stressed. As long as you're still alive, there's any, there's, you know, you can always change things, you can always improve in any form, shape, or, or way that you need to. Yeah, most of your epiphanies did not come through rumination. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Most, of them, most of them did not. So, um, yeah, reflection, not rumination. And I use this app called Calm, C-A-L-M. Oh, that's a great app. Yeah, yeah it's free. And um, I listen to the ocean waves sometimes when I go to sleep, and you could adjust the volume too. So that really helps me. Or rain, if you like the sound of rain on leaves or... You know, there's different sounds that really help me as, as rather than just a regular white noise. That yeah. helps me as well. 
Yeah. yeah. What I use is I use um, earplugs. I put earplugs mm-hmm. at night, and then I wake up in the morning and feel so much better. Mm. Um, also, you know, when I I fly all the time, and I I you know been to Asia multiple times in Europe, and sometimes you take a, a flight that's you know ten sixteen hours and whatnot, and I I usually put earplugs in and you know don't hear anything from the the, the airplane noise. And what I found is when I arrive at my destination, I feel so much more refreshed. Uh, than when I used to not wear earplugs because, you know, the noise from the airplane sometimes gets you more tired and, and your brain just seems to be working overtime. But with the earplugs, I found that it's you just go to sleep and it's very uh, meditative. You know, usually you can hear your breath and that puts you to sleep faster. And it's just to me, it's so much better. So I don't know if you ever try those. Uh, yeah, well, earplugs. um I actually have not for sleeping, but I can understand how blocking out all sounds can certainly do that. I prefer to have pleasant sounds around me. Um, I rather like listen to, um, like I said, like a white noise or the sound of the ocean waves or the sound of leaves rustling. Sometimes I'll open up my window so I can hear nature or crickets or something like that helps me to, to feel peaceful and relaxed. But it really is subjective. I mean, if you don't like, some people don't like any noise. I knew of some people who can't fall asleep with total silence. They've got to have something going mm-hmm. on you know, mm-hmm. a clicking sound or uh, <laughs> whatever it is you know yeah so whatever works for you but um trial and error you know don't just think you just got to turn over and try to sleep what is missing what is missing in your environment do you need softer sheets do you need a firmer mattress do you need uh, earplugs do you need uh, a noise in the background do you need to put your cat outside or inside or wherever it is you know look around you and in terms of sleep hygiene and look at your immediate environment and assess what's missing what would help me? Is it the temperature in the room? Is it, um, you know, is it the clothes I'm wearing? Am I ruminating instead of reflecting, you know? Uh, did I, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So another thing is, uh, this is number six, mm-hmm. if you are snoring tired. So sometimes snoring is an issue for some people. And, you know, you may or may not know that you have this problem, but maybe your uh, partner tells you, you know, constantly or starts pushing you. <laughs> and, you know, this could be caused by a lot of different things. It could be allergies, could be a sinus infection. It could be sleep apnea or may, perhaps your nose is crooked. And there are also, you know, other issues that we might have with our breath and not being able to breathe properly. And so um, like pull-ups, for example, I know someone who had really bad allergies and they had pull-ups for a long time and they just couldn't breathe and they had to breathe out of their nose and that caused them to snore, you know, really loud. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are multiple things you can do about this. There are, you know, ways to correct this. Uh, Like for sleep apnea, there's a machine you can use and it, you know, makes wonders for some people. Uh, Also surgery. Uh, I know for pull-ups that my friend who got the surgery, he just loved it. And afterwards he felt so much better and he was able to breathe properly and sleep better and that just improved his life tremendously so yeah. you know if it's not something mental it could be something physical Absolutely. so you know always get checked and and there's multiple things you can do but you know you gotta go get checked that's the unfortunate part of it <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. lastly you know n- number seven is if you have an autoimmune disease or a virus like you know uh, l- l- lupus or fibromyalgia or Hashimoto's thyroiditis or you know if you have a Lyme disease these are things that a lot of people are now suffering from them I know um, uh, last year uh, Justin Bieber just released a statement recently saying that he had Lyme disease and he didn't know this until at the end towards the end of the year because he was very depressed really tired all the time and he didn't know what was wrong with him mm. And so Lyme disease, for those of you who don't know, it could, you know, come from a, a tick or a, a flea if you have a pet at home and they just, you know, ha- happen to have the disease. And you could have it and you don't know about it. And most doctors, I tell you, they don't test for it unless you ask them to, add, to you know, to test you for Lyme disease. Yeah. And I've, I've, you know, I treat people all the time and I've had more cases of this recently than ever. So I highly recommend that if you, if you still, if you tried everything else we talked about and nothing has worked, then maybe get tested for some of these autoimmune diseases or viruses that that are out there because you know it could be one of those and you really never know what what's causing it until you get tested for it yeah i agree and and i one last thing i think you'd say is that like the author of the article says charlotte cowell says don't self-diagnose that is one thing that's extremely important whether it's psychological or medical 
Um, I can't, you know, I can't stress this enough. Self-diagnosis is just um, not a good idea for a variety of reasons. Um, sometimes we, we don't want to believe something is true or if we're, if, look, if we're stressing about work, you're, you could be stressing about a certain symptom. So take the stress away and let's, let a third, party, a third party person take a look and be objective rather than subjectively deciding what you've got or what you don't, what you don't have. Um, so don't self-diagnose, you know. Yeah, I agree. So I'm going to be posting the link to this article at the bottom of this podcast. Uh, if you're interested in reading it, it's really, really cool. I highly recommend it. Um, but if not, hopefully uh, this podcast helped you. Uh, any last words, Neil, that you'd like to share? Yes, yeah, sleep well. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, sleep well. Um, take, uh, you know, take everything you've heard with a uh, grain of salt. If it's a medical, you know, a medical advice, always you know, research it yourself and ask a professional. Um, I'm not giving medical advice here. So, um, you know, just take, make a list of everything we talked about and see what works for you and what you we think the issue might be and just don't self-diagnose. Just, you know, make a list of everything it might be and, um, you know, sleep well. <laughs> get, get enough sleep. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Neil, so much for your time. Uh, again, my name is Robert Aceves, and thank you for listening to us. Please share this podcast with all your friends and family members. We are looking to make this community bigger every day. Send us your comments, your you know whatever you like us to talk about, your questions. We are always appreciative of everything you say, and this podcast is for you. And remember, we're here every Tuesday at 6 p.m., um, and we also have our Facebook page. We have a YouTube page that you can look into and uh, continue the conversation on there. So share your comments, your your concerns, and we'll continue this next week. All Sounds right? good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by MindFit. Please help us to share this podcast with your friends and family to grow this community. And if you'd like to donate to this podcast, or if you'd like to share your comments, questions, or concerns, send them to mindfitpodcast at gmail.com, or you can call us directly at 714-328-4661.